Hi, I'm Sandra Parker. There's an important distinction that I want to make and that I hope you'll be able to make. And that's the link between fear and danger distinctive from the link between anxiety and vulnerability. And that's what I'd like to talk about. There's a big distinction that I want to make between fear and signal anxiety. And we, we get these things confused, just like we get signal anxiety and pathological anxiety confused, that is signal anxiety being that little telephone call from your body saying that there's something vulnerable, and pathological anxiety being all the worrying and fretting and what ifing. There's also another distinction, which is fear, which is a core emotion. It's a, it's a real true core emotion. Core emotion is always truth, right? And that's information about danger, right? At no point do I want you to not know about fear, okay? Fear's good, you know? Fear is incredibly important. We need the information and energy of fear to get away from danger. Fear mobilizes us to take action. Fear mobilizes us to fight or flee. Fear gives us the attention, the focus, to notice where the danger is, and it gives us the energy to do what we need to do to escape from danger. I do not want you to not feel fear. I just need to keep saying that. Um, However, what happens is that people confuse these little signals in the body of signal anxiety with danger, okay? Fear is the appropriate response to actual danger. If I'm at the edge of a cliff, I should be feeling fear. If there is a large, aggressive, snarling dog four inches from my face, I should feel afraid. I should feel afraid. I need the information and energy there so that my body can do what it needs to do to protect me. Right? And interestingly, in that state of fear, when there is real danger, I am unable to do anything other than fixate on the source of the threat and get a plan to get out of there, and my body is already on the way out. Okay? So it's a beautiful, beautiful system that organizes us. Emotion is incredibly integrative. It organizes behavior and, and, and body state and information, the external world, the internal world. Emotion is integrative in every case. And in the case of fear, it is integrating us and integrating our actions. You could not at that moment, as that dog is snarling in your face, tune in and notice the subtle tension in the back of your neck or in your calves or in your quads. You could not at that point, if I said, I have a million dollars, would you please right now notice the amount of tension you have in your upper chest? You, you couldn't. For all the money I offered you, you couldn't tune in because you are actually in danger and your body is smart enough to say, are you out of your mind? I've got something I'm paying attention to here that's really dangerous, all right? So that is functional, all right? Over here in the, so that's fear and danger. Those concepts I want you to link. Over here I want you to link anxiety and vulnerability. Vulnerability is not danger. Okay? Vulnerability is a feeling of threat, but it isn't the kind of threat that being physically aroused, muscles tense, adrenaline pumping, cortisol through the bloodstream, is actually going to help you with. It's not the kind of threat that that kind of mobilization is actually a good match for. They don't match. They don't match. So the body starts to gear up, but the experience is not going to be best handled with that kind of energy. And the way that we can tell is that in that situation, we are capable of tuning into the body. Right? It's not easy because we have to learn how to do it and we have to practice it. But the fact is, if what is making me feel vulnerable, like I was in a situation earlier in the day and I thought somebody was maybe 
looking at me funny and thinking something not very nice about me and I feel a little threatened, I feel a little vulnerable, right? And some feelings come up in my body and I'm, I'm signaled. I am able, if I choose to, to tune into and feel how my diaphragm is jumped up and feel how my shoulders are hunched forward, how my chest is concaved and feel how my quads are tight and my feet are lifting off the floor, all of which of course are the same basic machinery of fear, the same basic action of fear, except I can notice it. I can actually notice it. So that experience, even though it felt vulnerable and threatening, is not actually danger. It's not something that leaping, you know, is going to resolve very well. And so I want us to actually link that anxiety and vulnerability, that's the situation that I'm coming home to the body, I'm going to be with the body, I'm going to reassure the body, and at the end of that, I've got all these resources for dealing with that difficult situation that happened earlier in the day. Perhaps I just leave it, perhaps I do something, but here I am, fully connected to myself, here and now, able to come up with the correct solution to that problem. None of that would be appropriate over here. I just need to run, <laughs> right, or fight. And that distinction is very, very important for us to keep in mind, that if we are in a situation of danger, that mobilization of the body is designed to get us out of there, and we go. Most of the time in our daily lives, we're not in situations where we need to leap tall buildings in a single bound or lift Volkswagens off of children. We are actually in situations where we feel threatened, we feel vulnerable, you know, we feel the limits of what we want in, 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 in being able to make those things happen. And it's those experiences that are our daily diet. That is what life is for most of us most of the time. We are so blessed in, in, in certainly in, in um, you know, in Western culture where we aren't living survival lifestyles, we are actually placed, so blessedly placed to grow. Um, we aren't actually having to deal with really feet on the ground survival issues, run, fight, flee, survive, right? So we don't want to miss out on that. If I'm living my life in survival mode, like I've just, you know, been in a plane crash and I'm living like that every day of my life, I mean, I don't die from it, but I sure don't grow. I miss out on all of those benefits of growth.